taste it, off we go. You missed all that first good stuff? <laughs> I saw a movie preview the other day. It looks. Um, it was. I don't know if anybody's seen it. This preview yet. It's about uh, making a Mary Poppins. Oh, really? I didn't see the preview. Yeah, it looks so really uh, interesting because from the preview, it looks like Walt Disney met with great resistance from the the writer of Mary Poppins, and, and uh, it looks very interesting because, of course, it's this worldwide phenomenon, and I don't know how we got the book, um, but. It's Tom Hanks is playing Walt Disney, and Emma Thompson is playing the writer of Mary Poppins, and she's quite staunch. And Mary Poppins is like this real person, and she's like, who she's defending. She doesn't know she does not want Walt Disney to turn Mary Poppins into this flightful <coughs> thing for kids. And um, it's a pretty funny scenes in there where the two guys on the piano made up all those songs. They're they're making up words. And she says, that's not even a real word. And they go, yeah, we just made it up. Like, just unmake it up. Like, you cannot, you know, you <laughs> cannot do this to my book, right? Supercalifragilistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, but, and it was funny because they had made some other, and then they had supercalif, and they just hit it underneath the thing so you couldn't see it. But um, hmm. I thought it was, wow, what a great story, right? The resistance, the resi like, because we resist, right? So here's this person. This is interesting because um, these meditations, these next kind of um, rounds of meditations we're going to be doing, will hopefully show us what we grasp to to be real, right? And uh, a part of grasping is also resisting, right? And so, like, and so that kind of case where she had this idea of us and it was apparently about a real person Mary Poppins was a real person somewhere and uh, who so she was like holding on to this idea that she didn't want Walt Disney to exploit so she, she had great resistance and um, you know she and it from I'm just from the preview right and sometimes the previews these days I mean you watch the whole movie right <laughs> it's like a book report on the whole thing um, but what it looks like in the preview is that Walt Disney breaks her down. He breaks down her resistance with his playfulness, and uh, he, ch he and, and he is so obsessed with trying to get this story that he will not let up. It looks like, and she, and obviously we know the end of the story because there's Mary Poppins. But um, what if you know what if her resistance had won, right? What if her resistance had won the day? We never, we would never have supercalifragic, you know. <laughs> it's audacious. Right. Yeah. We would never have that movie. Would have never have been able to be like so. You know what is it? Like how many things have we resisted in our lives? Like what, what will we not, right, let enter the world that that we could, <laughs> the world could benefit from and. And one thing the world definitely does not benefit from is our resistance. I mean, it's generally not pleasant to be around. <laughs> it's not pleasant to feel. And it's like this, um, it's like striving for some kind of safety, right? Because your resistance is a very broad domain, you could say, in our lives. Because it covers a lot of areas. Because when you think resistance, sometimes you get this instantaneous like thing, but, but there's more resistance. Unless you investigate unless you unless you have investigated it, unless you've meditated it enough, there's more resistance in you than you think to all kinds of things. Right, and um, so sometimes grasping to something like a relationship, and even though, like for instance, it, it's crazy. So maybe you're in a relationship. I'm, I'm sure that everyone in this room has been in this kind of relationship, where it's kind of already over. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? And you're just like hanging around because you, because you just can't 
come up with the courage or you can't like it's too scary like the 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 alternative is like some abyss right that you just can't get your mind around and there's so there's a lot of resistance there's resistance to um, change um, you're definitely resisting your partner right there's resisting resistance to the partner um, there's resistance to like um, feeling like your daily routine could change even though in the back of your mind there's this thing like I gotta get out of here this is not healthy and years can go by like that years can go by like that um, I've done it myself and uh, it's not fun it's not a fun place to be right for, for anybody so why do, we, why do we remain trapped in our own resistance? What are we so afraid of? What are we so afraid of? And there's only, you can't, you can't find out. Like you can't find out what you're afraid of until you can make the connection between um, what you're associating your world with like, you can't find out that connection until you realize, oh, you know, um, I'm associating this feeling in my body or this feeling in my mind um, with this situation or with this person. Like, if we don't, if we don't allow like a relationship, any relationship, like friendship, mom, dad, brother, sister lover, right? If we don't allow that thing <laughs> to do its thing, to breathe and grow with us, because what can happen is we can get into it with all these ideas in the beginning of what this person is and what this person, um, how this person is, mor is miraculously somehow making me feel. Oh, I've never felt this before in my life. You must be the one. And then you keep wanting to recreate that feeling, which you can't recreate. Because we cling to an image. And the image is always changing. And so we resist the change. We resist the change. Even though the change is happening anyway. <laughs> yeah. We just a big we just we fight, is what we do. Even though, as you will see if you haven't already, that um, your world, how you perceive your world is is directly um, is the same as your mind in a sense where it's a constant beautiful and natural beginning and ending it's a rising and it's a falling it's a rising and it's a falling in a constant stream and yet somehow we have this crazy notion that we can make something freeze and it's actually impossible and it never does freeze the only thing that freezes is the mental image of that thing. And so you hold this image up onto a thing that's not even like that, has already changed probably a year ago. <laughs> yeah, called denial. Yeah. Like you're denying. You're denying. <laughs> yeah, you're denying. You're denying, you're denying, you're, de you're denying, and you're de denying that you're denying. It's triple denial. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so we put a lot of energy into that. We put a lot of energy into mentally deciding on what something is and then just holding on to that thing. And it's, it's already changed the, the minute. It's already changed the second after we first perceive it. So how to let go? Right? How to let go? How 
how do you let go? It's it's a it's a version of a of a self. If we can, like in these classes, we'll dive a little a little bit into that today, and then after the break, right up until Doug's retreat, we'll start um, going more into like the nature of um, a self. Because everything relates to that. Your whole experience and how it is that you experience something in a pleasant way or an unpleasant way, in a resistant way or an embracing way, is all directly related to how you experience this certain kind of Yulia or John right, or Marjorie. Like it's a, like it, um, and what you think that is and what you think that needs, and what you're willing to do to get it. Even though that as well is constantly changing and flowing, and changing and flowing. And we can learn to be completely open and completely relaxed. As the appearances come and appearances go, while you remain The center, while well, you remain like the still center, and have the the pleasure of experience, whatever it may be, the 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 pleasure of witnessing the beautiful and natural arising and falling of the appearance of your world. And so then, from that, you can meet the world like that, and then you can meet other beings like that. You can recognize that everyone is experiencing the same thing. Um, I sent that email out, because I've been thinking a lot about this lately, about common ground and about equanimity and, and this, and, and how it's such a... Um, it's so elusive, right? Because in Tibetan logic, in Tibetan debate, we, we, there's this thing where we have to have common ground. You can't like have an argument or have a debate unless you find common ground. And I, So I've been teaching this for a while now, and I've been thinking about common ground for years and years and years now. And it's profound. It's profound to try and find um, the common ground between you and another being in your interactions and let go of the need to have it be a success or right or wrong or them them wrong and you right or, or, or whatever it may be whatever maybe you need to be wrong <laughs> right so like how to get so that you're not living the fluff and, and just get right to the base of reality where everyone, where everything just is, right? Where love exists and, and you share that space with another or two or 10 or 10,000, right? Um, how do you get there? Well, you have to undermine, you have to undermine the constant um, tendency to resist to, to, to want something out of a situation for this certain self that it is our job here to break down. It's that certain self that um, is the cause of misery, is the cause. And it can be done. <laughs> it can be done. That, that self can be seen for what it is in its true light, and it can be... Um, abolished from your reality and you're still there you're still there you're you, you can never not have this experience of of you it, it just it just becomes something completely different it just becomes something that um, that old kind of you can't really relate to so anyways um, let's begin trying to 
find out how we're associating uh, things that we see in the world to our feelings and how we prescribe um, those objects to be the cause of those feelings. So we need to discover that. So let's do that in the meditation. <coughs> so we'll get into our meditation positions. Turning inward now. Pull your mind away from the sounds of the room, the sights in the room, and right into the realm of your body. Think of that movement of the mind into the domain of the body as an assistant, as assisting your mind to become locked into the present moment, right where your body must be, so that let the mind join it. Each moment that goes by, give your bare attention to physical sensation only. Notice that feeling of solidity and firmness. That mysterious sensation of where your body parts meet the ground, meet earth. Just staying focused on that feeling alone. Using it to ground yourself into the present moment. Then let your focus wander throughout the body and notice any physical sensations wherever they announce themselves. Wherever they pop up. If you notice any tension or pain Wrap your inhale around it 
and release it on the exhale. Now we're going to move into a more subtle object by shifting our focus to the physical sensation of the breath passing at the tips of the nostrils. So as you're having your mind focused on the breath passing, begin to think of a phrase that you're going to use as a leaping point into the realm of your mind. So. Just a sentence or a phrase. Maybe it's a line of a poem or a lyric in a song. If you'd like to borrow one from me, I, uh, I like to use the words Limitless Horizon. So you're just thinking of this phrase, what it's going to be. And then let it go and then return to the nostrils again. Just calming the mind again by watching the passing of the breath. Like you are finding a still point at the nostrils so that you can actually be witness to the breath as it passes without controlling the breath. establishing your vivid attention by single-pointedly focusing on that tip of the nostrils as the breath passes. So when I snap my fingers, you're going to use that phrase, and you can think of it as focusing on the nostrils, it's like a platform. And then this phrase is you're going to take this little leap from there, keeping your focus though and focus on this phrase that you're going to use and begin thinking single-pointedly on the phrase.
after you've gained some stability by remaining focused on this phrase, become attentive to whatever happens next. So you can think of that phrase as like your next stepping stone. You drop the phrase and be ready for whatever arises in your mind. So here's where you want to let your awareness hold its own ground and remain the neutral witness to whatever appears in the parade of appearances, neither preferring it or resisting it not wanting it to stay or wanting it to go. If you begin to feel like you're floating away and you need more grounding you can return to the breath of the nostrils just to regain your single pointed grounding and then try to leap off again into the realm of watching what comes and what goes. As if some part of you was as still as the sky and your thoughts and all associated with these thoughts are like clouds coming and going. If you notice that you have been sailing off into one of these thoughts or into one of these appearances, you've been taken by the taken by the image, taken by the thought. Just relax, let it go. And rejoice, thinking to yourself, ah, I am lucid again. And return to your still point of awareness and relax even more deeply. You will notice as the years go by in your meditation practice that relaxation is a very, very major key into your success. If you get lost at any time, you can use your catchphrase again to bring yourself back to a grounded still point. And watch that phrase come and go and then be ready for whatever is next. The Buddha said, if you want to directly experience the nature of your mind, 
notice a mental appearance as it arises, stays, and dissolves. As you watch the parade and the entire life cycle of these appearances, we do the Pasana inquiry by having a few questions in the background. Do you notice a mental appearance as it arises? Or do you become aware of it only after it has arisen? What are the factors that influence the appearance? What influences this particular mental image? Is it related somehow to a previous one? Where do these mental images come from? From where do they arise? Once a mental appearance has arisen, as a witness, notice with your focus how it abides. Is there a location of this mental image? Or does it seem to be in motion? Does it appear as something that is unchanging? Or is it constantly changing, even during the time that it is appearing to you? Try to be present and notice as an appearance fades out. See if you can actually witness the entire life cycle. Is it a fade out? Or does it disappear suddenly? Does something need to rise to come into its place before it can go? Does another mental appearance need to be there to cause the dissolution of the current appearance? Or does it happen naturally on its own? Does the simple arising of an appearance mean that it will dissolve again? Try to maintain this 
relaxed stillness as you're witnessing this constant parade of changing appearances. There is a part of you that is untouched. Is the watcher, is the experiencer, trying to maintain this mountain-like still awareness, not swayed by the comings and goings of the contents of your mind. close still. Preparing to open the eyes. But remaining childlike, fascinated, always a good practice to Open the eyes just a little bit, let the light in, trying to remain in this centered place, if you did indeed find a centered place. And then gradually opening your eyes more, taking in your surroundings, but staying. in this center. If you're lying down even if you're sitting doing whatever you need to do to begin to feel the body's mobility, stretching, tingling, wiggling the toes and fingers, slowly just coming back and then we'll return to our seats.
So how was that? Anybody want to share anything that they experienced? It's good to notice, like, I noticed, Amanda, you're, you're moving your leg. But you're doing it very mindfully, right? It was probably getting painful for you. Yeah, it was. Right? I couldn't actually feel it anymore. Yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. So it's, did that become necessary? It's nice, you know, to just kind of like, not just like spaz out and just, right? You just slowly, you know, with this mindfulness, watch it just so you're not, you don't lose your ground, right? I had a very strange uh, experience in that where um, I just had a memory come up that just popped straight up as soon as we went from the phrase into the mind. And it was just simply like me driving a car somewhere. It was about six years ago. Mm. And um, I was driving the car and then it was a particular place. Um, and then the bit that didn't happen that was part of the memory was me stopping the car and getting out and being sick, right? Mm. So the actual driving the car really happened, mm -hmm. so that was the memory, but when I remembered it, I, the, the, there was a whole story of me getting out of the car and being sick. Which didn't happen. Didn't actually happen, no. And so then my mind kept going over that, and then when I let it go, other memories came in. And then I watched them rise and abide, and then the calm memory came, but just kept wanting to come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did that um, feel when that was all going on? Well, I started to analyze it. <laughs> I started to get into the, uh, okay, so wh what was going on in my life at that time, and should I, what was I vomiting up? Right. What was I not saying? And then it got into this whole analytical thing. And then I was like, right, I'm getting attached to that, and I noticed that. Mm -hmm. And I simply came back and just observed without being attached to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the challenge, mm -hmm. is, to, is to do that. Yeah. yeah. You can gain insight like that, though, as mm -hmm. well. You know, you could, you know, something could, but I think that... Um, Generally speaking, and in my experience, um, when you're meditating, and if you're if you're going to have some kind of realization or gain some kind of insight into something from your past that's like shaped you now or something, um, often it, it it happens like like that. Right? You'll be it'll surprise you and come out on left field or something like that. And uh, often doesn't happen by like. Furrowing, furrowing the brow and like scrutinizing a certain situation because um, uh, usually when we are trying to figure something out, the the trouble the trouble in that is that um, the same kind of mind that got us into trouble in the first place is also trying to figure it out. <laughs> so when we um, like can relax I mean and it's not you know an, a, across the board rule but generally speaking a lot of times if we get caught into trying to figure out something and we're emotionally pulled into the memory or emotionally pulled by it it's very hard for us to actually have a clear thought right as opposed to um, gaining enough meditative stability to actually be able to look at it like, you know, like you're looking at a, a child looking at a toy or something, without being too like around and around and around, but you're remaining calm, and then something could happen from that. Some deep part of you could have a realization about uh, the nature of yourself, you know, like because um, we're always being triggered constantly. But uh, like, if we don't have if we haven't gained, like, there's there's kind of like two kinds of people in the world, <laughs> right? There's um, the ones that have, like, done their work in a way and, and have uh, 
done what they needed to do to leave. They're still in the world, but they're not of the world. You know, they've left the worldly pull in a sense, and they're still in the world, fully embracing everything and everyone. But they're they've stopped trying to make the world work out for them, right? It's more like um, they worked it all out within themselves, so everything just works out, no matter what it is, and that's what they bring to every situation, right? Um, so they're not attached to like a success or a failure in a worldly way. They're just this is our this is the experience, and uh, um, where's I going with that? So if we can um, gain enough meditative stability during the day, right? Then we're not constantly being triggered by things and being uh, having these mental like physical, right? Physical sensation, emotional sensation, um, like. Uh, memory triggers by by anything that's going on, right? That because we haven't let go, we haven't let go of um, who we think we were or are or, or and should be. So everything is like uh, like a high stakes game. Like every, anything that comes up is there's so so much at stake. And um, I, was, I was watching the other day. Um, that's how I relax. I like to watch movies. And uh, I got really excited the other day because Netflix uh, uh, decided to put on uh, Robin Hood, <laughs> the, the first one, <laughs> the very first one. I think Robin Hood is a rabbit. No, he's a fox. Robin Hood is a fox. It's Walt Disney. The cartoon one. The cartoon one. I used to love that. One. It's the best one ever. They haven't surpassed it yet. I don't, you know, like as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> Kevin Costner is could not come close to the fox. You know? <laughs> But uh, as I was watching it, I, I was curious as to like, why did I like it so much? Like the, it was a certain tone of the, the main narrator's voice and the songs were so good and the characters are so funny, but um, I, I caught a glimpse of how it was that um, I had some opinions, like that movie shaped some opinions in my own mind stream. And I recognized, um, that I had certain um, positive association with uh, certain characters, like um, uh, Friar Tuck, who was the drunken monk, you know. And each person has a certain quality of character, and Robin Hood is a certain way. And he's got his buddy, who's got apparently more common sense, but you know, will also do whatever Robin Hood does, anyways, <laughs> right? And then I could feel it in my winds and in my mind how. It was almost like I got a glimpse of the past as a child being, you know, so immersed into a program like that and then associating those kinds of people into the people that I saw in my world. And it kind of gave me a, um, uh, what did you say, a glimpse into how important it is as to what we expose our minds to. Like, and a lot of children. Like in, I mean, right now, it's just a lot of violent children are watching a lot of violence, and there's a lot of games, right? And so their mind streams, right, are being constantly bombarded with these images of um, just like killing people. It's, it's just like um, I remember. Do you remember when the the space shuttle blew up? Do you remember that? And there was a a teacher was on board or something. I was living in Prince George when that happened, and I remember watching the news, and it was horrible. And, but you know, you're watching this thing, and they were showing it over and over and over because they had caught it on camera, right? This thing, and then boom, it explodes right in the air. And the horror that I felt at the time wasn't wasn't that um, it had happened so much as I realized that I was completely immune to it, that I had seen so many explosions on the television, and I'd seen so much violence on the television, that there was a part of me that just thought that that was just normal. And it was, it scared me. I thought, wow, you know, and um, so, and that, and so whatever we've been bombarded with and chosen to sink our minds into, all through our lives, rebounds back out and creates like our 
Yeah, our, our resistance and our attraction, and um, which is the same thing, really, in just in a different flavor. Um, but it creates uh, an identity, in a sense, and. We don't uh, know that. We don't know that uh, this identity is made up of millions and millions and millions of like uh, influences that um, you could say, depending on a reaction to them at the time, would more or less influence us like um, now you would say in the now. But um, if you do gain presence of mind, you can stop that. You, 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 um, you begin to then, because if, if you did gain some ability to watch appearances come and go in your meditation, you can also do that as you walk through your day and be fully engaged in whatever it is that you're doing. Um, because it's no different. How is it any different with your eyes closed or with your eyes open? Just with your eyes closed and gaining some stillness, you just happen to have the time and presence to actually notice it. Oh, everything is coming and going and coming and going and coming and going. And uh, just as we walk through the day, it may seem like um, things are like static, but our mental association and our physical feelings about those things and our emotions about those things are constantly coming and going and changing and changing and changing. And we make the mistake of thinking that that, that, that process is like this single me. And, and, uh, and we can break free of that. We can break free of that and stop that cycle, and as soon as we begin to stop that cycle, then we begin to gain the ability to um, give truly of our whole selves unconditionally, and also be able to um, realize what our relationships are, like, really, like outside of our needs, like, uh, that we believe that this other person should be doing for us. And we hope that they will give us because they appear a certain way and, or had appeared a certain way. And, uh, you know, what happened? Where did the humor go? Yeah. I have met with a lot of resistance in that. Yeah, yeah, t yeah, tell us about it. What, I mean, well, you're probably I not just, alone on that. Yeah, a lot of um, just something that I sort of feel that I need to deal with, and it's I really, I'm finding it very difficult, so it's been on my mind, and it's been on my thoughts, and it just kind of, I would, my mind was, there was many thoughts coming and going, but it kind of went back to that thing, and that person, and to go back to my phrase and yeah but it, there was a lot of fear and resistance there yeah so. yeah and it feels a certain way right you yeah. feel it probably in your body mm -hmm. yeah yeah like it was really like I was relaxed for seconds but then tense and then I just go back to the breath but just it was very and going through a lot of fear and resistance. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And wanting to not be that. Mm -hmm. Trying to, you know, just. And wanting to be, not be, be, be that not be, not be resistant or not be. Yeah, is that what yeah you mean? not yeah. be resistant and, and in those, or not having those fears or. Uh -huh.
It makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's like it runs so deep right? because we can first, okay, I'm having this feeling and uh, I'm trying to watch this thing come and watch it go and yet I, I'm having a hard time. I'm feeling a draw into wanting to analyze it or, or wanting to engage with it. And then, because of um, how we are, a lot of us are, we, that then turns into a different thing where we then start feeling bad about ourselves, right? And it's like, well, then, and then a different kind of resistance comes, comes in. It's like, oh, I don't want to be like that. I'm, I'm doing this wrong. I shouldn't be like this, you know? I shouldn't be feeling this resistance, or I shouldn't be. And that's a whole other animal, mm -hmm. right? That's kind of um, separate from the initial one, and yet it's joined. And yet it's somehow, it's, they join forces now. So now, not only do you have one, you've got two. You've got the problem, and this other problem now that's now joined. And then the army is gathering its forces, mm -hmm. right? So this is, this is good. And um, it's where we're going next, actually, because because now we need to learn to, okay, notice the comings and goings, but then what's going to help me? Uh, what can I focus my mind on that's going to free me? Right? Let's, if everyone just close their eyes for a moment, just for a few minutes, and, and we'll just do a little experiment. So in your mind right now, think of somebody who is very uh, dear to you, who is very close to you, and you feel very drawn to them and you like being around them. Just think, think of that person and see them in front of you very clearly. And try to notice how your body feels. Try to notice any feeling that you have in your heart. As you think about this person. Just keep looking at them. And keep feeling how it's... affects your body and your mental state. Then switch to someone who, if it was up to you, you'd never see them again the rest of your life. If you have someone like that. If you don't have anyone that strong, just someone who um, is always pushing your buttons, or someone that's you know, or, or some situation. Even if maybe it's a situation that you're trying not to, trying to avoid that looks like it's uh, causing you problems. Just think about something like that, and notice the feelings that you have in your body. In your mental state as you look at that person or that situation. And then open your eyes. So what did you notice? Anything? <laughs> I'm not just smiling. You noticed something? Yeah. Something strong? Yeah. Yeah. What, what happened? Um. Well, with the first one, um, I had different sensations, nice sensations, and I had a really warm feeling inside, mm -hmm. like a lot of heat, and almost like fire. But mm -hmm. it felt really nice. Mm -hmm. And then with the second one, I was like. 
angry and like like that but um and I noticed all these sensations again and then it all came back into the center again and I was like oh it's the fire again the mm -hmm. same thing same thing mm -hmm. anyone else I felt the first person might and sort of weightless and Tense and palpitations, and just yeah, I don't know, feeling that, you know, that fear, that not feeling it, that fear. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt. It's a physical feeling, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Anyone else want to say anything about the two? No. Or the one? In my first case, I didn't have that much tension. <laughs> 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 I've been working on it, so I have. I know I have tension everywhere uh -huh. <laughs> in every situation. So yeah, the first <laughs> one was a little less. Like the second one was no. Oh, good. <laughs> and I, in the first time, I I had a smile, and it just came as a smile. And the second one, I noticed my jaw started to clench. Uh -huh. yeah. So are you saying you have tension all the time? I I noticed. I didn't know that. You didn't I'm know. Wow, so this is awesome. So like this, right? Yeah. So you now you're you're bringing your attention to know a lot of anxiety, a lot of anxiety. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can ship it in wagons. <laughs> wow. Anyone else? To say anything? I was gonna say just um, I use this particular person, but I work so much with them, <laughs> so a negative person that. I noticed that I, I couldn't feel negative to them unless I kept a certain type of mental image. And then I knew it was a mental image. Right. So, um, and it didn't make any sense to kind of hold that one mental image. And, right? It just seemed um, static. Right. To try yeah. and hold it that way. Right. So, I had it a lot afterwards. No, you didn't. I did. <laughs> 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 well, so when I get the anger response, which I got the second one, yeah, thought about exactly what that feels like, and it usually has to do with sort of heart rate going up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't measure it, but I feel my blood pressure going up. I guess because it starts to feel pounding. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe usually my jaw clenches. Uh huh. some kind of un unpleasant sort of feeling. It's like muscle tension. Uh -huh. So the thought I had is, well, okay, I get all those things other times. Like, you go running, your blood pressure goes up, your heart starts racing, all that stuff. So take all that away. So I mean, it's not, it's not anything to be concerned about. Right? I mean, it's like it's not some weird other thing. We get it all the time. Uh -huh. So the thought I had is, so when you take all of those things away that are, you know, they feel uncomfortable when you're sitting around, what's left of the thing that we call pain, that I call anger? Right. Nice. Yeah. Good thought. Yeah. I mean, and I guess yeah. what's left yeah, yeah. is something called resentment. Right. So it's, it's purely... So you would call that story. resentment. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's all that's left. Right. Because you can usually calm your, you can usually, like, I mean, this works. This can usually calm down the physical response. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing, right? The people don't even, I mean, is it, is it them? <laughs> I don't know, do, you, I mean, do we see the mirror? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're not even in the room. Right? So what's going on? Right? Um, but your story about the tension, is just, I was telling Amanda this last week, but um, I should, when I first took singing lessons, I started taking singing lessons, and my, my singing teacher was like, You're sh you have so much tension in your shoulders, and my jaw too. And uh, uh, my shoulders were like this. 
like all the time. And I, I didn't know that, you know. And she's like, relax your shoulders. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, you don't really like, what are you talking about? And then she's like, this, my, um, my shoulders go down. And uh, that took me uh, about a year, a full year of, of constantly noticing. Because what I would notice was um, I would succeed in relaxing them. Like, and but, but then, but, but yeah, they just like slowly come up without even me noticing it. And then so it was this thing. And uh, it, it took a while, but what really broke it for me was when I noticed that um, this, wa this thing was associated with my need to be seen a certain way. And how I wanted to be seen was I wanted to be seen as like a, a good, a hardworking person in the world. And what, so what I noticed then was that uh, I was putting way more effort into whatever it is I was doing, no matter what it was, so that I looked like I was working hard at doing it. I'm a hardworking, good person, right? And, I, and it was just, it was my senior teacher first, that would, you, you first gain the thing, and then you begin to wonder what the heck's going on, and then you begin to see. And uh, one day, I caught myself, I was, uh, what was I doing? I was, right, I was screwing a valve onto a propane tank, and it was a big propane tank, and I started laughing because I caught myself going this, <laughs> so, you know, and I thought, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and, and I caught, <laughs> I caught my, my mind going, Look, everybody wants the good worker go, right? <laughs> and I, and you, don't, you just can just turn the thing. It's just like it's super easy. Right? And I, but I knew I was in trouble, right? So I, okay, you got some problems, right? But we don't like notice those things, right? We don't notice those things until we, notice. like as Julia says, well, I, I've noticed that. Well, my my, you know, good is just less tension. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that is progress. It is because uh, I mean, you 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 build up this snowball where it begins to. You know. So Jan, what what is the what is the time you need to actually be out the door? It should be nine. It should be nine. Yeah. Okay. Because the last couple of times it was it was, really, it was dicey. Really close. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do meditation now, and I'll 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 streamline it down so that it's. 15 minutes, because it's quarter to nine now. And we can do it in 15 minutes, because we're already, what? I could just go now and then not disrupt. No, disrupt no, 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 it's, it's good, because no, it's good, because we're all, we're all kind of already okay. poised for the meditation. We just meditated, so we're all like, we don't have to s take so much time in the beginning. If 15 is enough, then. Yeah, 15 is plenty. So, let's do this. We're going to um, see if these objects that we look at really are the cause of our tension or la lack thereof. there already, you will reach a point where just the thought to turn inward will be instantaneous. And you won't have to go through any preliminary process. So, let's try the trick of using the bowl. I'll strike it and concentrate on the sound and follow it to its very end, visualizing that at the very end, this final still point of the sound, 
you will reach complete still relaxation as your focus becomes more and more subtle as you try and try to hear the last of the sound. Relax into the heaviness of the physical sensation. Completely give your focus to that. Enjoy it in a very relaxed way. Let's draw our focus to the tip of the nostrils. Watch the breath as it passes the tips of your nostrils. Try and catch the physical sensation of the breath as it passes there. Very subtle. Give your full awareness to the entire cycle of out-breath. All the way to the final instance before the pause. It's on the out-breath where we find our key to stability. On the in-breath, it does it for us, us our, by itself. It's the out-breath that can help us gain the stability. standing on this platform. Our mind is resting upon this platform, becoming very still. And we're going to make that tiptoe off this platform into the mind by using the phrase, when I snap my fingers, use that phrase from the last meditation to step into the realm of mind. focused, noticing whatever arises, whatever stays and dissolves.
It's like using that rehearsed phrase as a stepping stone out into the domain or into the domain of mind and then letting it go and quietly watching for whatever is going to come next. Letting your awareness be your awareness. Just being aware. Rest in being aware of whatever arises. the impassive witness. So in this meditation, what we're going to be focusing on is our subjective response to any of these appearances. The feeling of neutral or positive or negative. So whatever is arising, notice if it's true that for as long as you are focused on the appearance which is the so-called cause of your subjective response, that subjective response remains. Then notice what happens if you shift the object of your meditation to the response itself. So you're going to let go of the so-called object that is causing the response and turning the response itself into the object of your meditation. This feeling of liking or disliking. Does the strength of that positive or negative feeling change under the focus of your bare attention. Does it seem to fade away quickly when you shift your attention from the object to the feeling itself? If the feeling has dissolved or transformed into something else under your focus, see if you can reconstruct it again by focusing on that would-be cause, the appearance itself. and then shift back and forth a few times. See if you can find what it is that actually creates the feeling, positive or negative.
What is the nature of that mental feeling? Can you watch this mental feeling arise as the so-called cause arises at the same time or before it? Or how does it happen? In what order does it happen? Does the feeling come first followed by the appearance? Or does the appearance come followed by the feeling? Or are they simultaneous? If you get lost in the appearance and forget to shift your focus to your response, just let go. Rejoice and return and relax even more deeply and watch for the next appearance. Let's bring ourselves back to the room, following the sound of the bowl. Bringing yourself back. Wiggle your toes and fingers if you're lying down. Giving yourself a stretch. Taking your time to return. And always trying to make it a default exit by trying to keep tuned into the center as you emerge back to surface. Thank you, Dan, for having a nice trip back. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Anybody have any thoughts on that? Any experience you'd like to share or say? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Find, did you find that you were able to to actually shift to the actual make the object of your meditation the feeling itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that yeah. awesome? Yeah. yeah. Anyone else have the any 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 trouble doing that? Just shifting to the feeling? Isn't it? It's it's very um, 
we're going to be doing more and more of this. Uh, it's uh, empowering and uh, liberating. Yeah. Um, really. Not quite dif dif this differentiate between liking the object and wanting the object. Ah. Uh -huh. So I have this image. When I like it, I have this kit. I want it. And then if I don't like it, that I don't want it. <laughs> right. I don't know if it's. My mind is not very clear. Right. So you're you're saying you're a little bit unclear in this moment uh, um, about the feeling. Uh, no, I couldn't. I for some reason thought that when I like something, I automatically want it. But right. I'm not sure what was coming first, wanting or liking. Right. Right. So then, w in this kind of in this at this point in the game of this meditation, what you would do then is. Um, Say you're seeing this object in front of you, and then uh, you're feeling like you want it. Mm -hmm. Then that's like a mental thing too, right? It's, uh, it's it's attached probably to a feeling, and then so what we attempt to do then is to shift right into whatever it is you're feeling in your body, mm. right? So you're like letting go of wanting it in a sense. Of, of like the mental process of, of getting and going right into okay uh, what is the feeling I'm having like about this object and can I and can you at that point uh, let go of the concept of getting it and s getting it or not getting it and simply feel uh, what's moving around in your winds in your prana in your energy or what whatever the physical feeling might be or the emotion, or whatever they it may be, right? And just stay with that. And <coughs> in the beginning, uh, that m may be tricky. There may be like a very little fine, subtle line that, that blurs here and there. Um, and it may be easy, and probably for certain objects it will be easier or more difficult. It will depend, and it will also depend on uh, sometimes the time of day and what kind of, how you're feeling. Does that make sense? No, no, it, it totally does. Yeah, I, yeah. I had the feeling, and I was able to go, when I was a kid, when I first even felt it, that mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I pictured it as a hat, <laughs> just cats. But yeah. And the feeling that getting is good for some reason. I don't right. know. I don't know. Well, sure, yeah. Saying. Getting is good. Getting is good, yeah. yeah. Just getting is good. This is... I can't go any further, maybe I should try. I, uh, what I was trying to say is I wasn't able to, I don't know if somebody has the same experience, I couldn't tell whether liking it or wanting it was, what, what was gone, I wanted to understand what was coming first. Right. You know, right. you like it and you want it, or you want it and you, you like it, I don't know. Right, and then, so then you have the opportunity to doing a few different things in your meditation, right? You go to, okay, what's the feeling of liking and what's uh -huh. the feeling of wanting? Oh, okay, okay, right? okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, um, because that's a very healthy thing to do, <laughs> to discover. Because then maybe as you go through the world, you'll have a feeling of, okay, I'm just, I just like it, or I just want it. And you may want something you don't like. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> right? Interesting. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's good to notice, right? You said um, I went back to being a child too, mm -hmm. and the feeling and fear that I was experiencing with the first meditation. It was kind of the answer for maybe why I was feeling the way I was feeling in the first one. And then I saw myself as a little person feeling that fear, and then resistance or just the the wall, you know, of not wanting to to experience that as a child, that feeling. And then just being able to relax with that mm -hmm. and look at yeah, yeah, it's really mm -hmm. as a kid too. Mm -hmm. It's an awesome experience. I mean because 
if uh, I mean, if you buy into any of the ideas of uh, Tibetan Buddhism and karma and emptiness, and uh, you know, we're not going to get into this now because it's the end of the class, and we'll get into it some other time. But um, I think probably we'll talk about this in the next bunch because we're going to uh, do some emptiness stuff and some mind stuff and some self stuff in the next uh, after the break. But um, you know, if if it is that um, everything that we're experiencing is brought about by causes that that we have put into place long ago, and uh, and if we experience these things in our life, and we keep recreating them over and over and over again by uh, not being able to let go of them and not not being able to disassociate like this this me from it. Mm-hmm. Um, then we continue the cycle. And then if in meditation we can gain that ability to just simply feel it, just feel it, um, you know, that is like purifying. It's like purifying old habits or old karma right in this right on the spot. Because you're still feeling it. Because you can have a memory of, of a situation and feel very feel those emotions very intensely years later and if you sit and uh, experience them but with this clarity and what and have them come have them come and just simply watch them and but feel them and then just try and take the object away and just simply feel and go okay and are they attached ultimately this and that but I mean it was so long ago how can I still feel this mm-hmm. right um, then you could look at that as in like emptying out that karma or emptying out that situation from your mind. Like you're just draining it out and emptying it out by not re-reacting, by not reinvesting in it, right? Because that's what we do, right? We reinvest in the memory, the bad memory, and we reinvest in the good memory. You know, and it's uh, and 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 so our circles remain, right? Our patterns remain, do, 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 do. the small ones and the medium ones, and then, and then the eventual large ones. So. That's a topic of uh, much conversation or study, but yeah, it's 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 a wonderful place to start to really notice because uh, you you gain a new power in any kind of situation. You can sit down and, and investigate what's going on with you. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you, thank you. So now we're going to take a break until after the Christmas break. So, so when are you back then? January 7th. The 7th. Of course, you could always come here on this Saturday for eight hours and meditate. That's right. Or sections of yeah. it. Yeah, I know. If I don't go to seminar, I'm set. You'd be, so, you'd be amazed what you can pull off. Yeah. Yeah, because we do them in 24 minute increments and you to get a little break, six minute break and mm-hmm. you can pop in, I'll be guiding like four meditations during the day and you can pop in uh, five, five, yeah. there's a schedule you can pop in or just come in and just try the whole, yeah. the whole, sh- yeah you'd be amazed. I did for one Sunday, it was great, just for a yeah. few minutes, but it was great. Well thank you everybody. Thank you. Awesome.